Hello aviators, welcome back to the finer points. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the finer points about holding pattern entries. And over the years, you've seen us produce, you've seen other people produce videos about recommended FAA holding pattern entry procedures. The procedures that contribute to the fewest number of turns as you approach the pattern from various directions. They're recommended by me, they're recommended by the FAA, but they are not specifically required. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. These entry procedures are exactly what we just said. They're recommended. They're recommended by me, they're recommended by the FAA, but they are not specifically required. Even if you look at the instrument ACS, in the knowledge area, it says that you have to be familiar with the elements related to the FAA recommended entry procedures. And in the skills area, it says that you have to use an entry procedure that keeps you within the holding airspace, all right? So let me dispel a myth straight away. And the myth is that there is not a protected side and a non-protected side. There is a holding side and a non-holding side. Some of you say protected side, non-protected side. If you learn it that way, it's wrong. You should forget it. It's a bit confusing. If you look at the AIM, you've got the holding side where you've got eight miles of protected airspace and you've got the non-holding side where you have four miles of protected airspace. So all of this to say, last week I was on an instrument phase check. My job was to pretend I was an instrument examiner and evaluate the applicant I was with. And we were flying the Livermore ILS 25 right approach. We were in simulated IFR conditions. So for traffic reasons, we were not able to climb straight ahead to 1200 on the missed approach. Instead, we had to start the right turn early. Okay, and that put us pointed toward Altam intersection where we were expected to hold just like this. All right, and if you know anything about FAA recommended holding pattern entries, this looks clearly like a parallel entry. Whenever you're flying toward the non-holding side in the wrong direction, it's a parallel entry. However, the Garmin, the GPS we're flying with, drew a teardrop entry. So most of us are flying with moving maps these days. This is why we're making this video. Almost everybody, even if you're flying a standard panel airplane, almost everybody has a GPS moving map. And often that GPS will recommend a holding pattern entry procedure. So I asked the applicant as we looked at this, as we approached this holding pattern in an effort to evaluate his knowledge of the situation, I said, what kind of entry are we gonna make at Altam? And without missing a beat, he said it's gonna be a teardrop entry. Okay, now the finer points. Is that a problem, right? We've just covered that it's not a problem. I mean, if a GPS approach allows for a T arrival, meaning anything up to a 90 degree turn is going to be allowed as a turn straight in on the approach, then why couldn't this turn right here at Altam, which is more like 70 or 80 degrees, right into the teardrop, right into the holding side where we've got all that protected airspace, why wouldn't that work? It would work. So why wasn't I happy with his simple answer looking at the moving map and saying teardrop? You know, I called a DPE friend of mine and I asked him, hey, what would you have done in this situation? And he reminded me that the ACS only recommends holding pattern entry procedures. It doesn't require them. So the thing that really bothered me about it was that it didn't demonstrate a complete understanding of the situation. Had that applicant said to me, well, it looks as though it would be a parallel entry. However, Garmin's drawing us a nice teardrop entry here that's less than 90 degrees of turn. I think I'm gonna do that because I would prefer to stay on the holding side of the pattern. If they would have said that, it was like, fine, boom, we just checked off all those ACS items. Instead, he looked at the moving map and said teardrop. Now. I am forced to ask myself, did he really understand what was happening? Did he just say teardrop because the pink line went that way? If the pink line went off to the left in some random direction, would he have just flown that way? Is there any understanding of the situation here? And so remember that when you're on a check ride or on a phase check, it's your job to convince the examiner or the evaluator that you are ready to go, that you do have the knowledge. Don't leave that person sitting there guessing. And of course, if you wanna fly the parallel entry, there's nothing wrong with flying on the non-holding side if you stay within four nautical miles. That is 
protected airspace. And just a few days later, I was flying IFR myself and flying the approach into Hayward Airport. And you can see me approaching Jobus just like this, clearly a parallel entry, although Garmin again drew that little teardrop. I didn't fly it that way, I flew the parallel because that's, I'm old school like that. So the last point I wanna leave you with is, don't just fly what Garmin drew for you because Garmin drew it for you. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Make sure that you understand the FAA recommended holding pattern entries and make sure that when you choose to fly one or not fly one, you do so consciously understanding the available options. And if you're flying with somebody who's evaluating you, make sure that they know that you understand the whole situation and all the available options. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. Uh, that was a little bit deep in the weeds, but I wanna make sure you get that information. It's so important for anybody that's out there flying instruments uh, or certainly going for an instrument check ride on an instrument phase check. We are just days away from releasing our instrument course into the Ground School app. It comes in as part of the same subscription. So if you haven't practiced your flying skills lately, download our Ground School app, go through a quick VFR review, and in a matter of days, we'll have the instrument course there for you. I know that it will make you a safer, more confident pilot. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should definitely select pilot protection services. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell, and leave us a comment so we know what videos you'd like to see. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.